On February 4th, the U.S. Defense Department said that the U.S. military shot down a Chinese spy balloon over the Atlantic Ocean on the same afternoon and is now working to recover the debris. The white balloon was hit and emitted a cloud of white gas, then shrank rapidly before turning into a white object and falling straight down. The balloon flew at an altitude of about 60,000 feet and was estimated to be as big as three school buses. Previously, a U.S. official said that if the balloon were shot down, the Northern Command would coordinate with NASA over the debris. The incident not only caused a stir in the U.S., but also made Canada unhappy. On February 3rd, Canada said it had summoned the Chinese ambassador in response to the incident. The balloon's intrusion into American airspace is a diplomatic, military, political, and sovereign violation of international public law involving China, the U.S., Canada, and some Latin American countries. The most unusual question concerning this case is, why did Beijing launch a spy balloon at a pivotal moment when it was eager to repair relations with the U.S.? What's the CCP's agenda? We will explore this in the second half of the episode. First, let's review the incident. On February 1st, the balloon was first spotted over the state of Montana. This is where the U.S. Air Force's 341st Missile Wing is stationed and where Maelstrom Air Force Base, one of three U.S. air bases that operate and maintain intercontinental ballistic missiles, is located. This object exceeded the 12,000 meter altitude possible for the largest civilian object and it flew eastward at an altitude of 18,000 meters before crossing the central U.S. According to NOAA weather models, it would soon drift off the U.S. coastline. However, it was shot down by a U.S. Air Force F-22 on February 4th in the waters off Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Fuck, man, I just missed it. So, it just, I seen the rocket come out of the... Damn, I missed it. Fuck. Yeah, so all of a sudden I seen the missile come out, it hit the balloon. The balloons fall in. Um, I don't know about the... On the morning of February 4th, before President Joe Biden left for New York, he was asked if the White House was planning to shoot down a Chinese spy balloon. He replied publicly for the first time, we're gonna take care of it, but didn't disclose any details. But we soon saw what happened. Wednesday, when I was briefed on the balloon, I ordered the Pentagon to shoot it down on Wednesday as soon as possible. They decided, without doing damage to anyone on, on the ground, they decided that the best time to do that was when we got over water outside uh, so within our within 12 mile limit. They successfully took it down, and I want to compliment our aviators who did it, and we'll have more to report on this uh, a little later. Thank you. Mr. President, what did you say about, about China? What's your message to China? You were saying the recommendation from your course from your national. I security. told them to shoot it down. On oh, Wednesday. On oh, Wednesday. But the recommendation. They said them. to me, let's wait for the safest place to do it. What does this mean? Are you worried about approaching the Chinese, China? sir? Prior to this, due to the impact of the Chinese spy balloon, the Federal Aviation Administration had ordered three airports in the Carolinas to be grounded, and both the air and sea areas below the area where the balloon was shot down had been cleared in advance. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer tweeted, I strongly condemn President Xi's brazen incursion into American airspace, and I commend President Biden's leadership in taking down the Chinese balloon over water to ensure safety for all Americans. Now, can we collect the equipment and analyze the technology used by the CCP? In a late briefing on February 2nd, Pentagon spokesman Air Force Brigadier General Patrick Ryder confirmed that similar intrusions like this have happened before. He said, This is not the first time a balloon of this nature has flown over the continental U.S. It's happened a few times in recent years to include before this administration. James Palmer, the deputy editor of Foreign Policy, believes the trigger for the incident may have been that the balloon floated low enough to be seen by civilians, meaning U.S. authorities had to react. We, it looked kind of like the moon, but then I could see off to the right that the moon was, that clearly wasn't the moon. 
So then I started to tell everybody else, my coworkers, I started pointing up at it to see if they were seeing the same thing and they did as well. So then we uh, went into our shack and got some binoculars and started trying to get a closer look at it. And that's when we were able to tell that it appeared to be some type of balloon, like weather balloon of some, when we saw it floating just above the horizon. And then the Logan International Airports be maybe about 20 miles in that direction. After the western U.S. state of Montana, the U.S. Department of Defense said on the evening of February 3rd that another Chinese balloon was spotted flying over Latin America. U.S. Department of Defense spokesman Air Force Brigadier General Patrick Ryder said in a statement, A second, high-altitude Chinese surveillance balloon has been spotted floating in Latin America. We now assess it's another Chinese surveillance balloon. He didn't disclose the exact location of the balloon, but there are no reported signs that the balloon is headed to the U.S. On February 3rd, the Chinese Foreign Ministry referred to the balloon in the incident as a blimp, saying it was from China and was civilian in nature, used for meteorological and other scientific research. The Beijing government also argued that the blimp was seriously off its intended course due to westerly winds and its own limited control capabilities. But Pentagon spokesman Patrick Ryder countered on February 3rd that this is a surveillance balloon and that he could not be more specific because it was classified information. In regards to our announcement last night regarding the high altitude surveillance balloon, I'm not going to have much new information to provide other than to say that the North American Aerospace Defense Command continues to monitor it closely. While we won't get into specifics in regards to the exact location, I can tell you that the balloon continues to move eastward and is currently over the center of the continental United States. We know that it's a surveillance balloon, uh, and I'm not going to be able to be more specific than that. Uh, we do know that the balloon has violated U.S. airspace and international law, uh, which is unacceptable. And so we've conveyed this directly to the PRC at multiple levels. The balloon is currently assessed to be at about 60,000 feet, so again, well above uh, the, the range of civilian air traffic or where civilian uh, air traffic would normally fly. Uh, you said that this is uh, violating our airspace, so why not take it down? Yeah, so, uh, you know, clearly as we assess options um, and considering the, the size of the payload on this, uh, looking at the potential for debris uh, and the impact on civilians on the ground or property damage, again, uh, running through the, the various factors and looking at uh, in terms of does it pose a potential risk uh, to people while in the air. And right now, as I mentioned, we, we assess that it does not pose a risk to people on the ground as it currently is traversing the continental United States. And so out of an abundance of caution, uh, cognizant of the potential impact to civilians on the ground uh, from a debris field, uh, right now we're going to continue to monitor and review options. American manufacturers of surveillance balloons say the balloon devices are capable not only of capturing images but also of intercepting communications, as well as extending the range of cellular services and drones and other military assets. Experts say they expect similar capabilities from Communist China's balloons. According to Global News of Canada, sources said the Chinese spy balloon spent time in Canadian airspace before it arrived in the U.S. A senior Canadian official said that they and their American counterparts had noticed the balloon as early as last weekend over Alaska. It was tracked throughout Canada before entering the continental U.S. Canadian Conservative leader Pierre Polyev said, It's outrageous and very concerning that a hostile foreign government has a spy balloon in our airspace, and the balloon continues to transit into the northwestern United States. Global News Canada said many details of the incident remain unclear, including when or where the balloon entered Canadian airspace. The Canadian news agency reported that Canadian officials have not publicly stated whether the balloon flew through Canadian airspace, and Defence Minister Anita Annan's office declined to comment. In a February 4th email to Global News, a spokeswoman for Canadian Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolly said, Yesterday, officials from Global Affairs Canada summoned the Chinese ambassador to Canada regarding the situation described in a statement issued by the Department of National Defense. Canadian defense officials, for their part, said Canada is safe and that the federal government is taking steps to secure its airspace, including monitoring a second potential incident. The media has not yet been informed what the second incident is.
The Wall Street Journal also reported that high altitude balloons have also been seen over Japan in recent years, including in 2020 in northeastern Japan, where they were also spotted with a cross shaped object hanging below them. Japan's defense minister said at the time that the balloon was under close surveillance. It was also disclosed that similar surveillance balloons have been seen previously in Japan, Hawaii, India, and the Philippines. From the photos, the balloons seen in Japan, the US, and India, and Canada are very similar, with a solar panel underneath powering the balloon. There is no doubt that this isn't an ordinary weather balloon. In this balloon controversy, the Chinese side initially adamantly denied that the balloon was launched by China. On February 2nd, the party media Global Times found experts to say that it was pure nonsense. China's centralized media and Global Times subsidiary, Huanchu.com, interviewed a head of a science and technology intelligence company. He said the odds of such a probe balloon flying from China to the US are extremely small. The pictures released by the US show the balloon with a payload and that some of the components may have been produced by Chinese companies. So it cannot be ruled out that the US is making a big deal out of this, claiming that the balloons were released by the Chinese side in order to smear China. The report also quoted a Chinese military expert. He claimed that the US allegation that the balloons may belong to China was groundless and didn't rule out the possibility that the US was directing its own farce. The balloon is still at a high altitude, and the current U.S. identification means cannot identify which country the balloon belongs to. The expert added, We suggest the U.S. shoot down the balloon and find some clues before accusing other countries. However, these articles can't be found on Huanchu.com now. By the afternoon of February 3rd, when Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning answered numerous inquiries from reporters at a press conference, she said that speculation and hype were unhelpful until the truth was known. She also claimed that China is a responsible country that has always strictly abided by international law and has no intention of violating the territorial airspace of any sovereign state. China is verifying the situation and hopes that both sides will jointly handle it calmly and with caution. A few hours later, on the evening of February 3rd, in a spokesperson's QA, Ms. Mao confirmed that the suspected spy balloon over the US was indeed from China. She said, The blimp came from China is of a civilian nature, used for meteorological and other scientific research. Under the influence of westerly winds and its own limited control, the blimp seriously deviated from its intended course. China regrets that by force majeure, the blimp mistakenly entered the US. China will continue to maintain communication with the US side to handle this accident caused by force majeure properly. In the end, the CCP softened the tone in its response in an unusual way. Why? Because the balloon incident coincided with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's planned visit to China. U.S. China relations have frayed over the past few years and dropped to the worst level in decades after then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan in August 2022. The visit prompted Beijing to launch military exercises of unprecedented scale in the waters around Taiwan. Since then, the Biden administration has said it wants to establish a bottom line for the US China relationship and ensure that the competitive relationship does not turn into a conflict. President Biden and Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping met in Bali, Indonesia in November 2022. During their meeting, the two heads of state agreed to enhance communication and agreed to Blinken's visit to China as part of a process to stabilize US China relations. Antony Blinken was originally scheduled to visit China on February 5th, which was supposed to be a visit by the top U.S. official aimed at easing tensions between the U.S. and China. The CCP side also published successive editorials hoping the two countries would improve relations and not decouple. But now, because of this balloon, everything is changing. Blinken said he told Wang Yi, director of China's Central Foreign Affairs Office, on the morning of February 3rd that the balloon flyover was an irresponsible act and a blatant violation of U.S. sovereignty and international law. China's decision to fly a surveillance balloon over the continental United States is both unacceptable and irresponsible. That's what this is about.、Um, it's a violation of our sovereignty, it's a violation of international law. And 
it was very important that uh, we, of course, take the actions we did to uh, protect any sensitive information, to protect our people, um, and to make clear to China that, uh, again, this is an unacceptable as well as irresponsible action. What this has done uh, is created the conditions um, that undermine the purpose of the trip, including ongoing efforts to build a floor under the relationship uh, and to address a broad range of issues that are of concern uh, to the American people, uh, I believe to the Chinese people, and certainly as well to people uh, around the world. Um, so uh, we took the step that uh, I um, announced earlier today in postponing the planned visit for this weekend. Although Blinken went on to say he was prepared to visit China as conditions permit, policy analysts say that without a serious gesture of goodwill from the CCP, it may be difficult for the U.S. government to resume the visit quickly. So why are spy balloons being used when spy satellites and high-altitude surveillance planes are so common now? Why did the CCP release these special balloons on the eve of the U.S. Secretary of State's visit to China? Reuters reported that according to a 2009 report submitted to the U.S. Air Force Command Staff College, the advantage of balloons over satellites is that the former can get close enough to scan a much larger area and stay in the target area for a longer period of time. Satellites require space launch, so the cost can reach hundreds of millions of dollars. The cost of a balloon launch, on the other hand, is low. A more common interpretation is that this is a provocation by the Chinese Communist authorities. The purpose is not to make a security threat, but to deliver an obvious message to test how firm the Democratic Party administration in the U.S. is in countering the CCP's opposition. On January 7, 2023, a new U.S. House of Representatives was sworn in with majority Republican McCarthy as Speaker. Heavyweight policies were introduced on consecutive days. On January 10, the Select Committee on Strategic Competition between the U.S. and the Chinese Communist Party was established by a vote of 365 to 65 to reassess U.S. foreign policy toward China. The House of Representatives deliberately named the Select Committee on Strategic Competition between the U.S. and the Chinese Communist Party, indicating that the new U.S. Congress has made a clear distinction between the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese. All of these are bad news for the CCP. Presumably, the CCP is keen to use this opportunity to gauge how the U.S. domestic political arena will react to the unexpected. By unexpected events, we mean that something that would not normally happen is suddenly happening in an offensive, aggressive manner on U.S. soil. This is a test of the White House's control over Congress and its influence and power over the U.S. elite. The reaction to the spy balloons from the U.S. government and the public has been fierce. This has indeed made it more difficult for the Biden administration, which was already criticized for being too soft on the CCP when they tried to have the U.S. Secretary of State and the Secretary of the Treasury visit China to try to put guardrails on the relationship. For example, conservative rep Taylor Greene ridiculed the spy balloon from China, inscribed with the words, Eric, Happy Valentine's Day, Love Fang Fang. Fang Fang is a female CCP agent who was once active in California. She was exposed in 2020 to have quickly penetrated sensitive U.S. politics through long-term political fundraising and sexual bribery. U.S. Rep. Eric Swalwell is one of the politicians involved. In addition, the CCP is also testing the speed and strength of the U.S. government's response in the event of a sudden conflict in the Taiwan Strait. The balloon incident is an important reference point for how the U.S. Congress would have made a decision on the escalation of a sudden incident and how it would have planned for it. If there is still a need for parliamentary debate and media brawl, then the communist forces will have ample time and space to invade Taiwan physically. However, the CCP's ad hoc actions have always yielded some unexpected results. After a relatively strong response from the Biden administration, Beijing first had to try to downplay Blinken's cancellation of the visit. On February 4th, the Chinese Foreign Ministry website published a spokesman's answer to a reporter's question, saying, In fact, neither the U.S. nor China has announced any visit, and the U.S. side's announcement is its own business, which we respect.
Secondly, faced with the outcome of the balloon being shot down, the Chinese Foreign Ministry issued a statement on February 5th saying, Under the circumstances, the U.S. side insisted on using force and obviously overreacted. It is a serious violation of international protocol. China will resolutely safeguard the legitimate rights and interests of the enterprises concerned while reserving the right to make further necessary responses. No matter how tough the CCP may sound, the fact is the balloon is now in the hands of the U.S. Whether the balloon contains a civilian device, a military or spy device, experts will know at a glance once it's made public. The CCP softened its stance in the end but still could not say Blinken's visit to China. The visit is cancelled as of now. This diplomatic incident probably hit the CCP quite hard. This urgent situation will allow the U.S. military to see how the CCP's military intelligence chain works. The White House will be able to see how Xi Jinping's new team works and how it makes decisions. More importantly, the U.S. and several of its allies will be able to use this opportunity to establish how weak the CCP is at present.